Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector. Every Wednesday, Mark, along with his special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark is a tested, certified, and professional spiritual medium, metaphysical teacher, healer, and spiritual advisor with a spiritual practice based in Seattle, Washington. You are the inspired and the inspiration. When we heal the earth, we heal ourselves. That's from Anu Shia. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in this beautiful healing resting planet of ours. This is Inspired Living Radio. I'm your host, Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector, coming to you live from my studio, uh, aka quarantine, lockdown in Seattle, Washington. I hope that you are uh, staying safe. I hope that you are staying healthy. I hope that you are staying home and that you are following the data, following the science and following the history as we go through these unprecedented times in our history. I do want to just take a, a quick second to acknowledge um, the people out on the front lines that are making everything go from our healthcare workers, our nurses, our doctors, our firefighters, our EMTs, our police officers, everybody that's making the front lines go from our uh, clerks in the store, our mail, uh, postal carriers, our uh, railroad workers, keeping the supply chains up and running. I just want to say that you are true heroes. You are uh, those of you that are out on serving on the front lines inspire me. Um, consistently every day I get up and I just want to just say uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. We honor you, we see you, and we are very uh, grateful for you. If you want to tune into the live show, we're here every Wisdom Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern here on the Ohm Times Radio Network. We're moving into our fifth season of Inspired Living Radio where we have amazing guests, wonderful topics, very uh, inspiring and interesting topics, if you will. And today is no different. We're going to be uh, welcoming back to the show Mavis Patilla. I'm going to be uh, reading a little bit about her, her background, her story. Uh, she's been a friend to me, a teacher, a mentor over the, over the years, and uh, just lucky to have her come share her knowledge and wisdom with us uh, in these trying times with great trials and tribulation, when we're going to be talking about how the spiritual world can support us, it can guide us. We're going to be talking about mediumship and also just some inspiration uh, for uh, the days ahead. Uh, if you want to call into the live show, uh, we'll be taking callers in the second half of the show. The number to call will be 202-570-7057. Uh, we will not be doing live readings, but if you have a question based on spirituality, mediumship, question for uh, Mavis or question for myself, please give us a call uh, to tune in. If you uh, want to work with me, you can visit me at marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector, uh, where you can find me here on Inspired Living Radio and my podcast every week. Uh, second and fourth Wednesday of the month. You can find me every Monday morning for Metaphysical Mocha Mondays where I get, it's a 30-minute inspirational show of encouragement, motivation, guidance, positivity, followed by the Healing Cafe where I actually do live readings uh, with people all around the, the planet. It is quite inspirational and it's very uplifting for a Monday morning. And so you can find more information uh, on those shows at markleanheart.com. You can also follow the show live right now on our Facebook page, which is called Inspired Living Radio. Just ask to join the global community where we have, oh my goodness, I have to look at the numbers here. We have well over uh, 1,300 global inspired listeners all around the planet. So thank you for tuning in, listening to the show. We appreciate you. We like to say that you are the inspired and the inspiration. You can also follow us at Instagram and Twitter. Just look for the handle inspired for us. That is the number four inspired for us. And if you missed the live broadcast happening right now, no worries. You can always catch an encore or podcast later. Uh, you can catch all the past four plus seasons of Inspired Living Radio over on iTunes. YouTube, SoundCloud, Podbean. I have some of my favorite shows streaming over at marklanehart.com. And of course, you can always come here to Ohm Times Radio, click on the archives button, and pull up Inspired Living Radio to uh, check out the 
awesome shows we've had over the years. So with that, I want to get right into the show. I want to uh, welcome in our guest who is returning to the show. This is not her first time of being here. I want to read a little bit uh, about Mavis and her background. And, and she's a very well-known medium all around the world, a spiritual medium. I've worked with her uh, directly. She's been mentoring me for a few years now. And she's really helped me understand what is spirituality, what is mediumship, what is healing. And we're going to be talking about that in detail. She is one of the most experienced and knowledgeable mediums in the world today. I can, can concur, concur with that because I've seen her work several times. She is she is in a huge demand to share her thoughts and understanding of all things mediumistic, inspirational, and spiritual. She has worked with the spirit world for over 50 years and firmly believes that true True mediumship can bring healing to both worlds. A former senior tutor at the famous Arthur Finley College in Stansted, England, Mavis was trained under the watchful eye of her friend and mentor, Gordon Higginson, the colossus of mediumship in the 20th century. Over the years, Mavis has herself trained many of the high profile mediums around the world, uh, myself included. She believes that good foundations and high ethics are essential. That's why I love her. And she teaches worldwide, both in person and online, and inspires everyone with her down-to-earth manner, honesty, and practical approach. She is a great moderator, and anyone who listens to her is moved by her compassion, her enthusiasm, and the love for what she does. If you want to learn more about Mavis, you can go to her site at mavispatilla.com where she has books, CDs, all sorts of information. And Mavis, welcome back, my friend, uh, to Inspired Living Radio. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm doing okay. I, I, I Like we were talking before the show, I should be sitting on a beach in Hawaii celebrating my 25th wedding anniversary with my beautiful wife. Uh, but unfortunately, based on where we find ourselves in history, I am still here in Seattle. So um, thank you for joining us live. And I um, want to just give a shout out to Jean, too, because I know she's close by to you. So uh, thank you for coming on. And let's talk about uh, your journey, 50 plus years of working with the spirit world. It's been absolutely remarkable and wonderful, and um, I feel very, very honoured that uh, people are still wanting to listen to me. Um, you know, I'm <laughs> just an odd person, um, and the struggles that I've had throughout my life and the mistakes I've made, I think, have all been part of the journey. And I think our life here is a journey. It's a chapter in the eternal journey. So I'm hoping that this chapter that I'm writing now for when I go to the world of the spirit uh, will be one where I will understand far more than I did when I started to it when I arrived here. Yeah, and uh, what, what do you what do you feel? What's going on currently? We've never seen anything. What 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 we're experiencing right now? How do you feel that from no. a spiritual standpoint? that this is impacting us, not from our just our mediumship, but just spirituality and what is unseen, because what is going on is technically unseen, right? Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, when we look at it, and um, we look at the changes that have come in from this pandemic, uh, we've got to recognize that when we come through it, we will be different people. Uh, we will be uh, more aware, or I hope we'll always remember the pandemic, and it will make us aware of Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, Thanksgiving for everything that we have. And uh, unfortunately today, and I was just laughing, I was just smiling uh, when you said about you should be in, a, uh, uh, in Hawaii at the moment for your anniversary, and I thought, I wonder if that's a blessing or whether it's a disaster. And I thought to myself, I'm sure that you and your wife have made it a blessing and it's not a disaster at all. And I think that life's like that, you know, we can look at life and think it's a disaster or we can look at how we can view it spiritually and think, is it a blessing because it's teaching us to be more spiritual, it's teaching us to be more soul aware more aware of um, the planet, more aware of each other. The other thing I liked what you said when you were, you were you were talking about everybody 
that's working so hard in this pandemic. And um, what I try to do now is when I open my fridge door, um, I, I want to say thank you for the food that's in the fridge. Um, but I try and get a picture in my mind of the person who served me. And then when I see the picture in, in my mind's eye of the person who was there, who was serving me, and of course had the courage to turn up for work, because remember they've got to have courage to do that. And, and I think when I see the picture, God bless you. And I feel that whatever I'm doing throughout the day, I kind of try and get a, a picture of the person uh, whether it's a family member, whether it's somebody who's serving me, uh, whether it's the nurses at the hospital, because I, I'm visiting the hospital. And, you know, I get the picture of the nurse in my mind, and it kind of focuses me to actually say, God bless. And and I think that that is a blessing. Although the things that are happening are not nice and, and, and they're horrible, um, I certainly think that we can learn to open our souls more and we can start to look for the tiny, tiny, tiny little blessings that we've taken for granted for so many years. I mean, I took for granted the hospital and the pharmacist and, uh, and the food in my fridge. It was my birthright, yeah. really. Uh, you know, these things should be available all the time. And then suddenly they're not. And I thought to myself, goodness gracious, I've got to do something about this. How can I uh, serve humanity? Um, and I, I chose to use the frame of my mind to actually encourage uh, myself to concentrate on a, a particular theme. And that's how I did it. And that was my beginning. Yeah, beautiful. And I, I totally agree with you, Mavis, and the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm here in my studio and when the, the garbage truck goes by or the recycling truck goes by, I actually open up my window and I, I say thank you. You know, there's just a, there's just even just saying thank you and acknowledging uh, the essential workers out there can go a long way. And we've actually put up a big heart of uh, post-it sticky notes on the window just to reflect that we're thinking about uh, people that are essential during this time. And, and you're right, a lot of things that we've taken for granted uh, over the years, this kind of just brought us back to, you know, the reality of how important, you know, essential workers have always been and have really always been heroes. And, you know, it's just I, I'm actually thinking of the Winston Churchill, you know, being that you're over in England there. Uh, and I love Winston Churchill where he talked about, you know, fear is a reaction, but courage is a decision. And I firmly believe that, that if we have uh, courage, that we'll get through this together and that we'll come out of this with a different perspective. Because I've learned in my own spiritual journey, Mavis, that the the art of spirituality is changing perspectives and, and being in service but also seeing things from a different perspective than your own so you can grow and transform. And I think when it comes to mediumship, when I started to go down the path of mediumship over a decade ago, uh, you know, what I, what really drew me to you was your, um, your, how you teach on your foundations and the high ethics are essential to working in the physical world, but having the respect and the relationship with this unseen spiritual world uh, that we connect to. And I want to talk about that. We're going to be having our first break coming up here um, in just a few minutes. But I want to start uh, for our inspired listeners out there all around the, the globe. Sit back, grab your coffee, grab your tea, wherever you may be on this planet, and uh, get ready for some uh, inspirational knowledge from somebody that's been connecting to this unseen spiritual world for over 50 years. And Mavis, just tell us about some of the struggles some of the things that you have taken away in being with the spirit world for 50 years and why why do you do what you do oh well first and foremost i have to be thankful for the spirit world i felt as if they took charge of my life when i was sick and i they'd only given me three months to live i felt that the spirit world took charge and they they actually guided me through it and i didn't do anything um, and, and, you know, that that was wonderful. I saw the um, the spirit world 
you know, objectively. So they would be stood in front of me or if somebody came in the house, I would say, oh, don't sit in that chair. My granddad's there. And of course, granddad's in the spirit world. So the spirit world were the focus um, of getting me on the journey back to health. And that's the, that was the main thing. Um, I was only 27. I'm really just an ordinary I'm working class girl. I worked in the cotton mill. I like going out to clubs. I was, um, uh, you could say, almost, uh, I like jiving, I like dancing, I like drinking, I like smoking. I did everything. Um, so I, I really didn't have a deep spiritual con- conviction. Um, I just was enjoying life. Um, and when the spirit world added to that and helped me to get through the worst trauma of my life, I thought, oh, this is absolutely fine. You know, I've just got to ask them uh, what clothes I wear today and am I taking the right medication? And, and, and it would happen and it would happen. And we got so much guidance during that period. When, however, I got well and, um, uh, you know, a convention, you know, it was combined with conventional medicine, of course. I, I didn't get spiritual healing and that cured me. I had to, in fact, the spirit world guided me um, for the medication, guided me to the doctor so, and the specialist that I needed. So they were absolutely amazing. But when I actually started to improve, then I picked up my life again. I was uh, going to the clubs, I was having a drink, I was with friends, but I changed. And how had I changed? Well, I would be sat at a table full of people and um, I'd know what was going on in their life. So I'd know who was having an affair with who and I'd see mums and dads and grands standing around the uh, table. And I actually lost an awful lot of friends and that was the mm-hmm. start, really. I lost a lot of friends. I eventually found a spiritualist church. And in my day, that's where most of the people were trained, was in spiritual churches. Um, and um, I got involved then um, uh, with a lovely, lovely gentleman uh, called Mr. Brooks. So, you know, it's funny, I call Gordon Gordon, but Mr. Brooks, I always called Mr. Brooks. Um, he wasn't a medium, but he was a <laughs> philosopher. He was a speaker, and he knew everything there was to know about spiritualism, mediumship, and healing. He just was such a fountain of knowledge for me, for me starting out. But, you know, I didn't really take too much notice of the spirituality of it. It took me a long time to find that, to find the spirituality, to find the sacredness of mediumship. Um, At the beginning, it was something that added to my life and I could do it. So because I could do it, I was was okay. I would demonstrate people how it was sitting and it was fine, but something was missing. What was missing was my understanding that I was involved with something far, far more powerful, far, far more sacred than just communicating with the spirit world. And that, I really believe, was when I began to recognize that I had to find a teacher who would not only teach me the philosophy and and enhance what Mr. Brooks had taught me, but would also teach me about mediumship and about the world of the spirit. The world of the spirit is so important. And you know, Mark, I hear people saying, Oh, goodness gracious, I've got this energy with me. And I think, they're not energy at all. They're people. Mm-hmm. They're people. They're in another world, but they're still people. They still have their character. They still have their personality. And they're not there at our beck and call. Um, you know, and, exactly. and that changed me. I began to recognize that they were not my servant. I was serving them. So let's pause right there. We'll come and uh, pick this back up on the other side of the two minute break. Just for our inspired listeners out there, remember your intuition is like Wi Fi. It's invisible, but it has the power to connect you to a higher realm. We'll be back here in two minutes on Inspired Living Radio. The future of Internet Radio is here. 
Hong Times Radio, IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of OM Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of OM Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. Did you know that you have the power to change anything in your life? Did you know you can do so even with the things that you've already decided are impossible to change? Come join me, Venus Castleberg, on Outside the Impossible as I interview people from around the globe that have literally changed the things they thought were impossible to change just by using the amazing tools of Access Consciousness. Now airing Wednesdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Do you dare to believe that anything really is possible? A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. And welcome back to Inspired Living Radio. I love that promo. Let's do it together. Let's come together. Let's stay safe. Let's stay in love. Let's stay uh, positive and inspired that we'll get through this. This too shall pass and we'll get through it. There's a quote from Deepak Chopper that I wanted to read uh, based on what you were saying, Mavis, about wakening is not changing who you are, but discarding who you are not. And it sounds like after your uh, interaction with the spirit world, the relationships, uh, both I'm sure family and friends started to change. I've seen it with my own journey, uh, the changing of the, you know, moving from the caterpillar through the cocoon phase, becoming the butterfly and that relationship with the spirit world. But I wanted just to uh, pick back up right before the break of what you were talking about, your relationships changing and uh, no longer being the same now that you'd started to work with the spirit world. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a, it's a soul change. It's as if the soul is waiting for you to actually respond to it. You, the spirit within, the God source within, and, and finding that God source within starts to change you. It starts to um, encourage you to have courage. Uh, it, and you know the power of the human spirit. You know, when we look at that closely, it means that there is nothing we cannot do. It's the conscious mind that actually interrupts the flow. If we could just concentrate on what our aims and what our affirmations are, then that will take us forward. And it takes us forward mediumistically. We can stay in the past if we want and say, well, this is how I do it and this is what I do. And yet, there's so much more. What I've learned over my years is never think that you've got it because there's always something more to learn. Um, and, and with mediumship in particular, uh, you, you, never, you never know it all. You never know it all. You're on a journey and it's mm-hmm. an exhilarating, exciting journey of change. It's not becoming um, uh, dictated to by anyone. It's about the freedom of your soul, that soul connection with the God source that really gives you the inspiration and it gives you the upliftment that takes you forward. 
So when you're working with the spirit world, you, you kind of change your attitude. Instead of saying, is there anybody there? Which many of us do, or I did anyway at the beginning. I used to sit there thinking, oh, is anybody <laughs> going to come? Is there going to be someone? Can I have a sign, please? Will you tell me something? And now I recognize that I've got to say, I'm here for you. So the change has to be dramatic. So, yes, at the beginning, yes, they helped me, they guided me, they did everything. But then I had to learn. Then I had to start understanding that I was working with these beautiful, beautiful souls in the spirit world that, yes, needed my help as much as they were helping me. And that changed my thinking completely. And working with that, and, and when I sit down now to work, I just, or before I do a demonstration, it's not, is there anybody there? It's a low spirit world, I'm here. And it's like opening that loving source, that, that power within your being that is beyond our understanding of love here on this material plane. It's about just giving your all without actually wanting anything back without wanting the yeses and uh, and the evidence that makes you a star and all those those things. It's about being there for them, the grands, the grandmas, the mums, the dads, the children, the people that perhaps didn't live a particularly good life. I like being there for them because that's the healing between two worlds. And I do believe that we are healers between two worlds. When somebody gets the opportunity from the spirit world to come over and say, I'm so sorry, then we know a healing is taking place for them. Even if the person on the earth can't forgive them, a healing is taking place for them. They're beginning to recognize the mistakes they made. And we actually help them with that. And that's healing. It's healing for the spirit world to know that no longer they haven't got a voice. They have got a voice now. And they're using mediums to have a voice. And that's important too. Because quite often when people go to the spirit world, of course they want to be around their family. Of course they want to be with their friends. And they try to make their presence felt, such as, you know, it could be my imagination, but I'm sure I felt my mum kissing my cheek. It could be my imagination. How are we going to deal with a name called imagination all the time? And then that person on the earth finds a medium. And when they find a medium, the spirit world has a voice. They can say, hello. They can say, I love you. And they can say to them, do you remember? Because I remember this instance that we shared together. So we give the spirit world a voice. We also give them the power to actually link with us in such a way that the person on the earth can feel the love pouring through from, from them. And that, for me, is the most important thing, that when we're in the power and the spirit world can draw close to us, then that feeling that emanates from the medium that actually transforms into the loving power and it actually touches the sitter. It touches them. They know they are loved. They know that they're in the presence of the spirit. And really, that's mediumship. Um, and, and it's difficult to get to that point because we've got so much self-criticism, so much lack of confidence in ourselves. And, you know, we trust the people here more than we trust the spirit world. And what students always say to me, they always say, I trust the spirit world, but I don't trust myself. And that's a fallacy. You trust the people who are saying yes to you. So if someone says yes to you, you think, right, I'm a medium. Okay. That's not it. What is it is that communication with the spirit world, that feeling that your soul has risen and you become in harmony with that other world, and that what they're saying is important, not the list that you want. Um, you know, and we, we do have people that have a list, don't we? What time did you die? What day of the week did you die? How old are you? 
and mm. you know what did you do? <laughs> All these bliss that are in the conscious mind, and the spirit world aren't interested in that. They're interested mm -hmm. in communicating with the people they've left behind. Yes, it's wonderful if you can get the, what I call the well factor, but there's far more to it than that. There's that lovely feeling of joy that comes from the spirit world and from the sitter. And you're caught up in that joy. You're in that love. And what more can you have? Uh, and that's the life we live. And we live it every day if we're a medium. Um, not talking to our own, perhaps, but certainly we talk to so many people. And it's wonderful. And, you know, how do we become a highly recommended to the spirit world? Because, you see, we've had our adverts and you've said, you know, what I do, what you do. And that's an advertisement to get people to come. How does it work for the spirit world? So if we are not truthful, if we're not honest, if we change the information that they're giving us, if we keep dropping into the psyche and talk about the new front door, you know, we'll, we'll lose the spirit world. We won't have that recommendation over there. And we need to be so honest and so trustworthy. Our ethics, our moral duty and ethics, have to be of paramount importance with mediumship, in my opinion. Um, and, and that's really how I've been trained. Yeah, and I was I was laughing because when I first started down this path of what even mediumship was, I didn't even know if it was real, to be honest with you. My mediumship lay dormant for 27 years before, you know, great traumas and tragedies triggered that transformation, as I always teach on. And I just wanted to talk with my brothers. I didn't even know if it was real. And... Yeah, I'm laughing because when I first started down this path of understanding mediumship and going from places, you know, the Berkeley Psychic Institute in California to the Omega Institute uh, in upstate New York to the Arthur Finley College there in Stansted, England, uh, how I was first taught mediumship was that checklist that you were talking about. So that's why I was laughing because I, I remember one of the uh, teachers when I first started was like, no, we need to have this checklist. How old were they? Were they a man? Were they a woman? What were they wearing? What did they look like? And I could see the frustration even within myself. And as I've progressed over the last decade of understanding and going in that deeper understanding of what mediumship is and that relationship you're right, Mavis, a lot of it is healing, not only healing for both the worlds, but the medium itself. I've got in, I've received personally so much healing from some of the readings that I have done. And I always remind people that there's just that one message that can change a person's life. And, you know, unfortunately, in this day and age, especially here in the United States, unfortunately, I do see a lot of that wow showmanship. Uh, I do see that, you know, people trying just to get that one piece of evidential information and, you know, uh, look at it like that's what mediumship is. But it's, it's so much deeper uh, on the healing aspect in that relationship that you talk about. And I'm actually glad that I've gotten away from the checklist mediumship and gotten more into the essence and the storytelling of these uh, you know, these amazing people that once lived and now, you know, reside in the etheric world. And, and you're right, they're not energies. They're actually living uh, people. I still think that they're living. I still feel like they're living just in a different form. Uh, but they bring forth their laughter, their mannerisms, their personalities. And that's something that I teach on, something I've learned directly from you as a mentor. And uh, I think another thing for all you budding mediums out there that are listening to the show today or the podcast later um, it's about just showing up and being in service as well. And I think you've really helped me with that, Mavis, of being the storyteller, but also waiting to get to a reading and not projecting or not having something before it. You know, it's like standing up and give it a go and let the relationship unfold as it will. And that's been very helpful in just telling that true essence of what um, mediumship is in the relationship with the spirit world. So I personally thank you for that. Well, all I can say is we've all got to go to the spirit world. So we don't want a group of people coming forward from the spirit world saying, you took my name in vain. Um, we don't want that. We want to be able to go and look everybody in the eye in the spirit world and for them to say, welcome home and thank you very much uh, for being the healer that you were for me. And that's what we've got to remember is that for all mediums, one day you are going to go to the other world. You can't stay mm -hmm. here. Um, it's a bit frightening that and a bit daunting. Uh, but nevertheless, it does 
it does bode well to keep that in your mind a little bit. You know, um, am I saying grandmother's saying this or am I in the psyche and I'm saying it really? You know, so when the training's taking place, it's got to train in such a way that you understand what the soul is operating on. So you can operate on a psychic level and you can operate on the mediumistic level because you're using the same soul. The same soul power is being used for psychic as it is for mediumship. And I think that's really where, um, you know, mediums get lost a little bit. But, you know, with with the psyche, you can get clairsentience, you can get clairvoyance, you can get claircognizance. When, when you're working with the spirit world, you use clairsentience, you use claircognizance, you use clair, uh, clairvoyance, and you use clairaudience. So the only thing that's added when you work with the spirit world is the clairaudience faculty. But let me tell you, when you're in the power psychically, it's much heavier. It has a denser feeling. The soul isn't transferring into the auric field the same way. So it's coming across to the person you're working with. When you go to the spirit world, it has to lift. It has to open up and expand and embrace the spirit world. That's what it has to do. So there's a different feel between the two and it's a very different mm. you can't you can't yeah. mistake it it's definitely there that feeling of emotion that feeling of upliftment that strengthening within your being that rises up when you're doing it oh my goodness gracious me what a wonderful wonderful way we have to live you and i mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're going to be going to our second break here, but I, I agree with you, Mavis. It's it's that lighter feeling when I actually am connecting to the spirit world. It's that lighter, fluffier, full of love type of uh, information. So we're going to go to our last break of the show, and we'll be back here in two minutes. And as Rumi reminds us, be like a tree and let the dead leaves drop. We'll be back here in two minutes. The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at ascendinghearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. Hey everyone, welcome back to Inspired Living Radio, where we like to say, be inspired, inspire others, inspire before we expire. Our guest today, Mavis Patilla, joining us all the way from England, uh, staying safe in her home, as we talk about uh, the unfoldment of spiritualism, mediumship, how spirit can support us uh, during unprecedented times that we're all going through. And before the break, I was talking, uh, I left you off with that quote from Rumi about being like a tree and let the dead leaves drop. And for, for me, Mavis, the, the path of mediumship has been one of trust, 
but also another path of patience and being like that tree of life where, you know, I'm every every season it seems like I'm learning something new or I'm unfolding in a new way, whether it's my physical health or my mindset. But it's like that tree of life where I'm shedding the old leaves of past. And, and I just feel like I'm still such a child uh, and an infant in my grasping and understanding of the spirit world. But as we live through these unprecedented times, how would you describe the spirit world and trusting, like you were talking about before the break, that trust and that patience for the things to unfold, whether it's the voice or the signs, the symbols, the synergy, the synchronistic events, or the after-death communications, which I call ADCs? How do you how do you connect with that? How do you start to recognize that? How do you become aware of the spirit world and what is unseen? And how do they support us? I think that I believe in the droplets of God. Well, I don't think it. I know it. The droplets of God. In the world of the spirit at the moment, there will be thousands and thousands of wonderful, wonderful, inspirational thoughts that are being given to the earth. Um, But also we can look at those droplets going into our people that are researching this, um, this terrible virus, Um, looking at our researchers, look at our scientists, look at those people. They will be receiving from the spirit world without them knowing really. They will be giving ideas. They will be having droplets coming into their minds. Try it this way, try it that way. The problem we have with that, of course, is once we've got the, the droplet, the thought of God coming in from the world of the spirit, that sometimes our conscious mind then either ignores it or it doesn't actually fulfill it as as the droplet was meant to be. And that's the problem. So in the world of the spirit at the moment, that's what's happening. They're trying to heal by actually giving us the information that we need for us to get this virus under control correctly. We're also the spirit world dealing in another way because we will be getting our own personal droplets of God from the world of the spirit. I won't say mums and dads and grounds and grounds, because I feel that they'll be collective. It'll be more this collective power that's coming to us from the spirit world. Um, I wonder how many of you um, have had a thought, perhaps not to go out to the shop, and yet have ignored it and gone. I wonder how many of you have thought, oh no, I won't go to the hospital because I don't feel very bad. And yet your soul has been saying, go, these droplets are descending to take care of us. Um, And we've got to lift our soul so that we open up and we recognize these droplets that come in. Now, they may not actually come to you. I can just tell you an instance between Jean and I. Um, I really miss going shopping because I'm a shopaholic, so I love going to <laughs> any shop that's sort of garden centre things with anywhere. And I wanted to go, and, and I was getting a little bit fretful, not very fretful, but a bit fretful. And uh, I said to Jean, well, I could go, I'll put the mask on and I'll, I'll be good. And Jean said to me, no, it's not right for you to go. Please don't go. Now, I know that that was a droplet. Jean may have thought it was Jean. But I know (laughs) that she was impressed. And she was impressed. So I stayed home. I can't say I always take notice of Jean. That sounds ridiculous. But in, in certain instances, I believe that we are receiving personal guidance, healing, and help. We, we we sit and we welcome the healing, but we've got to welcome the individual personal guidance that they're descending with us. So it could be, yes, I, you know, in England now some people are going back to work. Now there will be people that the droplets are saying, yes, it's okay for you to go, but there'll be others where the droplet is saying, no, stay indoors for a little bit longer, keep in lockdown. Uh, You know, so we've got to become alert uh, to what's coming through from the world of the spirit. And I don't think we're taking it on board quite as strongly as we could, because I'm sure people are ignoring a lot and letting the conscious mind rule them. And, you know, the conscious mind is like a a little two-year-old child. If it wants its way, it will Mm -hmm. stamp its feet. The, The soul is like the, the, the parent 
um, or the person who's taking care of them, the soul rises to try and guide us in another direction. And when we've got the rising of the soul to direct us, and then we've got the spirit world giving us the droplets, then we really should be able to get that two-year-old under control and say, no, I'll do what's right. So for me, the spirit world's doing a lot of work at the moment. I also know that when we do our prayers and, uh, you know, if we pray and we're praying for healing, if we can just know that wherever we are, whether you're in Seattle and we're in the UK, when I go to sleep, Seattle's prayers are blessing me. When I awaken, my prayers are blessing you. So the healing prayers that is going across the earth from everybody is actually serving. So we cannot be where prayer is not. So we cannot be where God is not. Um, and, and prayer is so, it's so wonderful. When you, if you're stressed and you're having a problem sleeping, as you put your head on the pillow, think to yourself, well, there are thousands and thousands of people that are saying prayers for me. There's a world of the spirit that's helping with the prayers that are coming to me. And see whether that can just give you that feeling of well-being and allow you to have some gentle sleep because it's important that you do. Sleep's healing. And therefore, if you remember, as soon as your head goes on the pillow, someone, somewhere, is saying a prayer just for me. I'll never meet them why I'm on the earth. I'll never know them why I'm here. But when I get to the spirit world, perhaps I'll meet them then and I'll be able to say thank you so much. What a wonderful thought that is, to think that we cannot be where prayer is not. And for me, that is the most important thing that we can give to the world is our prayers and not a recited prayer i think it has to be a love prayer a prayer that rises from deep within your being a prayer that is blessing mother earth a prayer that is blessing uh, every living thing in this universal whole of ours so that no one is omitted we include everything that lives and and that's wonderful and then let the spirit world transport those thoughts and those prayers and believe you me you will be receiving them a thousandfold at this time and i feel that that is spirituality in action and we can just do that um sometimes you know i'm just going about my business perhaps ironing perhaps just washing the dishes and, and a prayer will just rise up from within my being. And, and it's a blessing. And I hope someone somewhere in this world receives that blessing. I never tell God what to do, because I know he's there already. I know he's trying to tell us what to do. Um, and that's where the droplets of God come from. And we just have to learn how to listen. And we've got to learn not to ask, but to listen. And when we hear, fulfill it. It's not a him, of course, because he's not sat on a throne and he's not actually brought this virus to make us a better people. He's here because we created a virus. The people on earth created the virus, not the God. God is not a jealous, angry God. He doesn't have a personality or a character. It's a, an eternal a consciousness. It's the supreme intelligence that runs through this earth. So we never need to feel that we are without God's support, love, kindness, compassion, understanding. Because that really is what this supreme being, whatever it may be, whatever label you may, you may term, that's the supreme intelligence. If only we would listen and not tell him what to do and think about it being a supreme intelligence rather than him sat on a throne. I believe that would move us forward greatly. 
See, I told you, listeners, that you'd be in for some inspirational guidance and wisdom and knowledge from the wonderful Mavis Batilla and the droplets of God. Thank you, Mavis, for sharing that. I totally, um, you inspire me, the words as they flow. And I know you just did that inspirationally. Um, no script or planning because that's how you that's how you work and you just let that information flow and was very very beautifully said so thank you for sharing that inspiration uh, in this time that we uh, find ourselves in and one of the things that came to my mind as you were saying that is also you know learning the language of the soul and, and understanding those droplets of God that we receive and there's no better time to start you know tuning into your own intuition and trusting uh, your intuition just like you know Gene saying you know maybe uh, maybe you should go to the show or go to the store and listening to that intuition because right now there's so much information out there it's like literally drinking from a fire hose of misinformation and conjecture and this person's opinion and that person's opinion and it can be very overwhelming and i think this is also a good reminder to listen and move into that silence so you can understand the intuition or the language of your soul to make an informed decision of course using science and data of you know uh with what we do but also learning from history you know the history point of this is really coming up for me because you know those that don't follow history or condemned to repeat it. And I know from our pandemic in 1918, the, the second outbreak was actually more deadlier than the first outbreak. And here we are with states reopening, uh, you know, England starting to reopen and people go back to their lives. But being informed and also having that relationship with the spirit world and your intuition, because at the end of the day, it's free will and choice is our greatest responsibility and power why we're here. You had the power to choose. You had the power uh, of free will to go to the store but something along with the encouragement of Jean, and I know how encouraging she can be, but that intuition within you may have said, okay, I will stay at home. I don't need to go shop today. And it's that trust of the spirit world. And it's that trust of your intuition. Would you not agree? Yes, absolutely. You know, I, it, and I don't need you, Jean, to prove to me it came from the spirit world or it came from the soul <laughs> because I know. Yeah. I know yeah. that that would have been a drop. That I know it would. Sometimes we just and, need to uh, hear it, though. <laughs> Sometimes we just need to hear really, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I just feel that it, when we come out of this, and we will come, this will pass. It will pass. Um, it will. It's how long we will remember to give thanks for everything, or how quickly we will fall back into the habit of wanting everything now. And, uh, and that's something we've got to try and take on board that we remember, you know, thank God for the trees, thank God for the everything that's, that's actually feeding us through this mm -hmm. pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it, it's interesting, isn't it? You talk about, you talk about um, in the, the other disaster. In the UK, we had a big disaster many, many years ago. And um, one village actually went into lockdown and nearly all of them died. I think there was only nine or ten people came through it. But they locked down themselves. They didn't have a government telling them. They didn't have anybody telling them. They came to the church, they joined together, and they made that decision we won't let it spread from this village, and it didn't spread um, uh, from that village, and it saved the north of England. So, you know, um, uh, listening, people listening to the God source is so important. Um, and that's not far from where we live, actually, that that took place. It's a place called Eam in Derbyshire. Um, and uh, it, it's amazing, isn't it? They didn't have a government saying, uh, you can't do this and you can't do that. They all went to church, and I believe they all prayed. And that was the decision that the whole village came up with, that they would go in lockdown. Um, what a wonderful thought. If only we could all come together uh, and, and actually decide that from now on, we're going to treat the planet well. We're going to treat each other well. And you know, when we look at, look at everyone that we meet, just remember that the spark of God's within them. So, you know, that link that we need with one another can be that spiritual link together, not necessarily um, does it have to be blood-related or uh, gender-related or uh, whatever. It can be that spiritual spark and it's within everyone 
And you know, if we look for it in everyone, then what a wonderful world we would live in. Uh, but I'm a bit of an optimist, so um, I think I'm a bit of a cockeyed optimist, actually, to expect so mm -hmm. much. But I can't expect less from myself. That's right. Attitude for gratitude. The glass is half full. Uh, you know, this, you're right, this will pass. Uh, we'll do it together. And, and I hope that we do remember, uh, you know, and, and it's a great reminder. It's uh, it's a great reminder that we need to be good stewards and be in a, in a system of uh, eco, not ego. So we can, you know, have balance with the planet. The planet is healing. There's a lot of amazing stories that are happening all around the planet uh, because uh, humans are not out socializing and interacting with each other. You know, and, and for me, part of the, the path of spiritualism and just walking that spiritual path is continually stepping in and out into the unknown. And a lot of this is going to be unknown, but in the end, it, it this too shall pass. And I'm excited to see where mediumship goes from this, because I know after great periods in history, the Civil War here in the United States, uh, the great uh, pandemic flu of 1918 that lasted two years, and it started in Seattle, uh, in, like this one did in the United States. So it's kind of funny how history is repeating. It's very unfortunate and tragic that so many people people are passing. But after this, I'm excited to see what unfolds for our for spirituality, for mediumship, for healing, for new ways of thinking and teaching. And Mavis, I just want to say thank you for being on Inspired Living. Uh, you are an inspiration to all of us. And if you want to learn more about Mavis, you can visit her at MavisBatella.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. Okay. Be inspired, inspire others, okay. and inspire before we expire. Thank you, Mavis. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Let's have you back after this is over. Take care, everybody. Namaste.